So in this video, we're going to be looking at some of the inherent problems and weaknesses that you find on the EA888 engine. Now, it's much improved over its previous generations and iterations. The reliability has been significantly increased. In fact, these engines typically run 100,000, 150,000 miles before you start getting these problems. But there were a few things that just crept in from previous models. The Volkswagen Group have done their best to address these, so we're going to look at some of the mitigations they've got in place, but also some of the areas you need to watch out for, particularly as the mileage starts creeping up on these engines. So the drawbacks on the EA888 engine. So we're going to have to be a bit picky here and just highlight a few potential drawbacks. The increased oil consumption is still an issue. The Volkswagen Group will still say that this high oil consumption is perfectly normal and just encourage you to use more oil. But that's a bit of a frustration. Not all of these engines have that high oil consumption issue. And it's certainly not up to the one litre per thousand miles that you would have had on those early Gen 1 engines. But from my research, this is primarily primarily down to the turbochargers, the high speeds, the high temperatures that the turbos operate at, causing the oil to just burn off a little bit more quickly than it otherwise would. So perhaps they need to address the exhaust gas temperatures a little further and get those exhaust gases into the turbo a little less hot than they are. And maybe that will help to deal with this oil consumption issue. So getting an oil catch can would certainly help to address this. So the positive crankcase ventilation system already has a mechanism for trapping oil vapour. But there's a rare situation where if you've done some wide open throttle driving and then you suddenly slam on the brakes, excess oil will be pushed out of the PCV system into the intake and you'll notice a lot more smoke on the exhaust. And that's also adding to the carbon buildup on the intake. So fitting an oil catch can will certainly make sense to mitigate that problem if that's your driving style, if you're noticing the extra smoke coming from the exhaust. But obviously that will necessitate you now having to keep an eye on the oil catch can and empty it at regular intervals. The timing chain expansion problem is still there so just keep an eye on the timing chain side of the engine if you notice any rattles or vibrations coming from there whip off the cover and just check the chains tension the tensioners themselves are much more reliable than they were on those early units but chains being chains they will stretch over time so observe the manufacturer's recommendations a lot of people are saying that these chains are fitted for life but metal chains will stretch i would never think of keeping a chain for the life expectancy of the engine particularly when you take into account my driving style. So weigh up the pros and cons of the cost of having the chain replaced or the cost of not having it replaced and having it fail on you and make an informed decision based on that. My other big bugbear as someone who likes to tune engines and get more power out of them is this fully integrated head. The modular design it's really good from a manufacturer's point of view but it makes the option of adding a higher flowing exhaust manifold or exhaust headers onto the engine nigh on impossible. Now it's all incorporated into the head itself. So Volkswagen Group haven't done a terrible job but when you're chasing those higher power figures you really want to look at every aspect of the engine and modifying it and tuning it and now they've just made modifications to the head and the flow of exhaust gases that lift little bit more complex just by incorporating it all into one unit. Other people have said there's still a problem with the piston rings. Um, I guess a lot depends on how the engine has been run in and how you've treated the engine. And if you tend to drive it quite hard from cold, you should never do that. That all increases significantly the wear on those piston rings and you are going to start burning oil through those. So the engine has a lighter construction. So some people will say that the engine is not as strong as its predecessors. So that might be true. We're not seeing the really high power project yet. There are are a few people out there working on higher power projects but they really are the exception rather than the norm when you go back to the early 2 litre TFSI engines there were more parts around and more people were doing really interesting things to those so perhaps if you want a higher powered project the Gen 3 engine is not necessarily for you if you just want a reliable efficient engine that you can reasonably tune and get a fair bit more power from then this is certainly the engine of choice because making those higher power figures does seem to require a little more effort than it did on those early engines and the actual design of the head negates a lot of the tuning options that you used to go out and do like adding the fast road camshaft and increasing the velocity of the gases through the head so there are specialist companies out there still op offering these services on the 2 litre TFSI Gen 3 head but it's a lot more complex it's a lot more costly and you have to really weigh up whether the gains that you get from those modifications are actually worth the investment that you'll actually put the engines are lighter the components they've used are lighter 
So a lot of people would argue that these lighter parts are somewhat weaker. So you certainly need to factor in the need for extra strength, strengthening parts, adding forged parts, particularly if you're chasing those higher power figures. So I really hope this video has been useful to you. Please boot that like button because that helps us to get out there. Let us know which engine you've got, which car you've got. That'll help me to tailor future videos so that I can cover the topics that are of interest to you. Please subscribe if you haven't done so because that really does help us to get out there. And I've lined this video up for you that you should find interesting if you just want to get a bit more power out of your engine reliably.